I first started getting interested in the lives of the improbable saints. Well, I mean, obviously as a clergyman, I kind of deal with the saints on an everyday basis, morning prayer and evening prayer, uh, are dedicated to the saints on particular days. But it was really when I started on Facebook and Twitter, which I had to do because of my job at the BBC. And so I was faced with uh, having to post something every day and not thinking what it could be. And then all of a sudden I realised it was in front of me and it was the saints. So I got into the habit of posting on Twitter and then on Facebook a sort of resume of the least un least likely saints because there are so many of them there are thousands and thousands of them and some of them have very vivid lives indeed so I started posting them and then if I missed a day or two people would tweet and say where's our update and they seem to enjoy it well I think one of the strangest ones is St Romwald of Buckingham he was uh, born in Northamptonshire where I'm from interestingly um, and he uh, emerged from his mother's womb saying I am a Christian I am a Christian I am a Christian he then preached a sermon on the brevity of life and died. St. Bianere, I like him a lot. He was, uh, his community was rather troubled by a dragon which kept drinking the waters of the Loire. So he went down to confront the dragon and danced about so badly and upsettingly in front of the dragon that the dragon strangled itself. He's a, he's a good one. There's St. Humphrey, I like him. He, uh, he achieved great notoriety. He died in Sicily. If you have a lock of the hair of St Humphrey, it will point towards a winning lottery ticket or a lost mobile phone or set of car keys. Uh, he's good. I mean, there are dozens and dozens and hundreds of saints with similarly exciting stories. I mean, I am surprised and yet also not surprised, I think, that it has caught on. I'm partly surprised because as a clergyman, I'm used to people expressing zero interest in the things of religion. That's a reality that we have to deal with day by day. But I think perhaps what it tells me, and this is related perhaps to the success of a programme like REV, which I've also been involved in, is that while Christian doctrine and the traditions of the church might seem obscure and completely irrelevant to people's lives, people are interested in people. So people who make those sort of commitments that the saints make, I think, do have a sort of fascination, puzzle people, sometimes annoy people. But there's something about their stories and about their characters that people do relate to and continues to fascinate them. If people disagree about what makes a saint a saint, and it has divided the churches for 400, 500 years, in my view, saints are people in whom heaven is vividly anticipated. They act as citizens of heaven before they've actually qualified for membership, if you see what I mean. And I think what that does for us, on the one hand, it shows us how you could live a life of integrity, dedicated to values which are not of this world. And in our world, in its clamour for prestige and status and material goods, I think to see people living for sacrifice and holiness is very impressive, even if it's incomprehensible. I think we do have equivalents to the saints today. I mean, there are real saints, there are real people around us all the time who are anticipating their citizenship in heaven, although we probably don't notice it. Um, and there are saints, I think, people of lives of spectacular sacrifice. Nelson Mandela, I think, would be one. Personally, I'm deeply moved by Martin Luther King, I think, and some of the heroes of the civil rights movement. You see saintliness in surprising people. I think there's something quite saintly about Peter Tatchell, actually, in his determination to uh, stick to his guns and through thick and thin and a considerable sacrifice to himself to stand up for what he believes in. I'm not sure he'll be swiftly included in all the church calendars. 